Joining me now to discuss the settlement bill, the proposed legislation which would retroactively protect outpost settlements on private Palestinian land, is Simcha Rothman, legal advisor of the Israeli Movement for Governability and Democracy. Thanks so much for coming in. Okay. All right, so to begin, the settlement bill passed the first of three Knesset readings, but now it's in trouble. What changed from before? Um, the problem, it's mostly a political problem. It's not a legal problem, and we usually don't, uh, we lawyers try not to deal with the political problem so much, but the problem basically uh, that Kahlan and Kulani, Kulanu uh, party said they don't want to pass a bill that um, they feel interfere with the Supreme Court or, or have some clash with, with its ruling. So, so basically that's the, the issue. But uh, there are deeper political problems that I'm probably not aware of. Right. And I mean, they would need the support of the Kulano party for this to be passed, right? Because it's 10 members. Yeah, it's, a, it's an important part of the coalition in Israel. So you need, you need them. So the bill has been proposed in two different versions. What exactly are the differences between them? Basically, there are two paragraphs of the, of the proposed bill, 7 and 10, that, that's the retroactive part. Because the, the law as a whole, it tried to deal with the problems that arise all over Judea and Samaria and tried to figure out how to solve those issues. And 7 and 10 chapters are retroactive. They say even places that are already being uh, discussed in the Supreme Court decision or in, in any other court a uh, decision um, the the process and the and the and the ruining of the of the settlement will be postponed until we figure out how to work uh, the new law right so that's the chapter 7 and 10 so and that's a difference with the other version now how can the Knesset legislate over land that's outside of Israeli borders uh, Knesset does that all the time um, it's an, it's not a new issue basically the the same law that applies in Gilo is outside of the, the borders of Israel as, as, the, as the world recognizes it. The law about the Golan, who applies the Israeli law in the Golan, is also uh, uh, not, appro not approved by any other country. Uh, and, and the Knesset does that, and the Israeli courts recognize that. Also, there are other laws that, that apply in Judea and Samaria as to, to, today. We pay taxes, <laughs> we, and the people are living there uh, go to the army, all kinds of laws that apply to, to the area in Judea and Samaria, and, and, and we live with it. That's, that's the situation. That's basically what you get when you are holding a piece of land for 50, almost 50 years. So, so there are the, the legislation in Judea and Samaria is a mix of an Israeli legislation, an old Jordanian legislation, uh, and, and British legislation. Lots so of international that's, uh, input. That's the issue. Right. Now, if this law passes with Chapter 7 and 10 included, the two chapters that you mentioned before, is this a legal issue or a political one? Basically, it's a political issue. All the legal claims, there are legal claims, but it's sol you can solve them. You can solve them if you want. But um, the feeling that, uh, that we get, and I sat in all the meetings in the Knesset, the feeling that, that the people sitting in the committee get from the government, from the chief legal advisor for the government, that he does not want to solve the problems. He wants to raise the problems and stop the law, and the reason we believe is political and not legal. Um, for example, the retroactive uh, issue, to say that the, the Knesset cannot cancel a, a ruling of the Supreme Court, Chief Justice Aaron Barak himself said that it's a possibility. He said it, he said it in 2006 when he left, left the court. He said that uh, um, he said it yesterday in, in, the, in the convention held in Zichon Yaakov. He said that that's not an issue. It's a non-issue, the retroactive. If the Knesset feels that the ruling of the Supreme Court makes no justice in this case, that's, that's, the, the, that's her job to solve the problem. And, and, and that's basically that's what's happening, that people say it's a legal problem and, that, and it's a political. It's the, and the Kulano and Kahlan does not want it, not because of the legal problem, but because some political pressure applied on them. Well, doesn't that kind of create a slippery slope when it comes to implementing law? Um, it might, but again, that's why we have, well, that's why we elect our representative in the Knesset. Because we want, it's, it's, not, uh, being, uh, it's not easy to go against 
uh, uh, ruling. But when the Knesset recognizes a problem, and, and, and we'll like them to find us the solutions. And it happened many times before. Like, for example... Yeah, can you give us some examples? For example, in, 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 it's very famous, and basically that was the first, uh, the, almost the first ruling um, when, the, when the court upheld a law uh, um, that contradicted the basic law, when, when the Knesset settled the, the laws for the kibbutzim. The kibbutzim was owed tons of money to, to, to banks and to private people, and, and the Knesset saw that the, all, the, all the settlements, <laughs> this time settlements, the, the, the places all in, in, in the north and in the Negev, are in danger, and people who live there, they don't have money to pay the debts. So even though they have a verdict, they need to pay. Even though some people already started paying, the Knesset passed a law, and even people that already got the money was, was forced by this law to bring it back. So when you, when you, need, you find a, a problem that needs a major change in the legal uh, um, paradigm, so you need, you, need to, you need to do it. And it happened, it happened many times. And, and, and this is the, just the, the just, um, easy example. It happened, uh, all the laws we have uh, um, safeguarding the, the, it's Choka Ganata Dayal, to, 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 when, when you have uh, um, protected rent. That happened after you signed a, an agreement, you have a verdict to evict someone, and then the Knesset passed the law and the people stayed in those, those apartments for many, many years. It happened. So there are lots of examples. Now, do you think that this legislation, in any of its version, has an actual chance of passing? And if it does, what are the consequences that we're going to see? Again, chances are a political question. I, I know I, I, I can speak from what I saw, but it's really I'm not a political advisor. I don't know the chances. I know that in, in, in the Israel, in Israeli regime, if a, a, a strong uh, if a big part of the coalition wants something, especially this time when the when the budget is supposed to be uh, to to be brought to the Knesset, um, he gets what he wants, and it, it's a political issue. If they they will apply them enough pressure, they will get what they want. But but uh, but what happened if it will pass? That's the big question because the law says specifically if it passes with chapter seven and ten that Amona should not should not be destroyed. It says it specifically. The question is, how will the chief legal advisor, attorney general, Mandelbit, how he will interpret the law? How we will, and, I, and if the, the, the law will go against and again, and someone will appeal to the Supreme Court that this law is unconstitutional, what will be the situation in the meantime? That's for the next chapter. And what will the world think of, of you know? What the world the think is, is, is also a very important question, but the same, and that was said also many, many times in the committee discussing this law, the world thinks the same when you close, uh, uh, when, when you build some, some house in Gilo, when you build something in the Golan under Israeli law. The world thinks the same because legally, if you don't accept the, the, the staying, of the, that Israel has the right to stay in the place, it, there, is no, there is no difference. Right. Well, thank you so much for coming, and I guess we're going to just have to wait and see what happens. You're welcome. I hope.